For centuries, humanity has dreamed of creating intelligent machines. From ancient myths of mechanical beings, to Leonardo da Vinci's sketches of automata, to Alan Turing's profound question, can machines think? That question ignited a journey, one that would reshape science, technology, and the very meaning of intelligence. This is the story of artificial intelligence. In 1950, a brilliant mathematician named Alan Turing asked a question that would reshape history. Can machines think? Turing had already helped break Nazi codes during World War II, proving how powerful machines could be in the hands of human intelligence. But his vision went far beyond wartime calculations. He imagined a future where machines themselves might one day show signs of thought. To explore this possibility, he proposed what he called the imitation game, a test of intelligence that we now know as the Turing test. In this experiment, a human judge would engage in conversation, not knowing whether they were speaking to a person or to a machine. If the machine could respond with such fluency and subtlety that it fooled the judge, could we not say that it was, in some sense, intelligent? It was a radical idea. Turing wasn't just asking if machines could calculate faster or store more data. He was asking whether machines could ever think, reason, or even mimic the complexity of human communication. This bold vision became the cornerstone of artificial intelligence. It challenged scientists to reimagine the very definition of intelligence and to consider whether it could exist beyond the boundaries of biology. What Turing set in motion was not simply a technical challenge, but a philosophical one. He forced humanity to confront a question that still echoes today. If machines can imitate thought, where do we draw the line between simulation and true intelligence? In the summer of 1956, on the quiet campus of Dartmouth College in New Hampshire, a small workshop took place, one that would change the course of history. Here, a young computer scientist named John McCarthy introduced a new term to the world, artificial intelligence. McCarthy, together with pioneers like Marvin Minsky, Herbert Simon, and Claude Shannon, believed that human intelligence could be replicated in machines. Their ambition was bold, to create systems that could learn, reason, and even solve problems the way humans do. The atmosphere in that room was electric. Computers were still massive, clunky machines that filled entire rooms. Yet these visionaries imagined a future where they might play games, understand language, and make decisions on their own. And soon, the first programs appeared. Simple by today's standards, but extraordinary at the time. They could prove basic mathematical theorems, play checkers, and solve logic puzzles. To many, it felt like the dawn of a new age, the age of thinking machines. Newspapers and magazines proclaimed that human-level intelligence was just around the corner. Scientists predicted that in a generation, computers would rival the human mind. It was an era of optimism, of boundless possibility. The dream of artificial intelligence was no longer confined to philosophy or science fiction. For the first time, it had a name, a vision, and a small but determined group of believers. That workshop at Dartmouth wasn't just an academic gathering. It was the spark that ignited decades of innovation, ambition, and debate. The age of AI had begun. The 1960s were filled with breakthroughs that made the promise of artificial intelligence seem tantalizingly close. In university labs, researchers created programs that astonished the public. One of the most famous was ELISA, a simple chatbot developed at MIT. Using clever scripts, ELISA could mimic the role of a psychotherapist, responding to typed questions with seemingly thoughtful replies. To many, it felt as though a machine was truly listening. At Stanford, engineers built Shaky the Robot, the first mobile machine to combine perception, reasoning, and action. Guided by sensors and cameras, Shaky could navigate rooms, avoid obstacles, and perform simple tasks. It was clunky and slow, but it represented something extraordinary, a glimpse of robots that could one day operate in the human world. Governments took notice. In the midst of the Cold War, nations poured funding into AI research. 
convinced it could deliver strategic advantages. Defense agencies imagined machines capable of translating languages instantly, solving complex logistics, or even guiding autonomous weapons. The media amplified the excitement, predicting a future where intelligent machines might rival or even surpass the human brain. But beneath the optimism, harsh realities remained. Computers of the time were painfully slow and incredibly expensive. Memory was limited, processing power was weak, and data, the fuel of modern AI, was scarce. Programs that dazzled in demonstrations quickly broke down in the real world. As expectations grew, results failed to keep pace. Promises of human-level intelligence within a generation began to sound hollow. By the early 1970s, enthusiasm gave way to skepticism. Funding was slashed, research stalled, and many scientists abandoned the field altogether. This period became known as the first AI winter, a deep freeze of funding, progress, and faith. What had begun with great hope now seemed like a dream deferred. The vision of thinking machines had not died, but it would have to wait for technology and human patience to catch up. After the disappointment of the 1970s, artificial intelligence made a powerful return in the 1980s, this time through what became known as expert systems. Unlike the ambitious dream of creating general intelligence, expert systems had a narrower goal. They were designed to capture the knowledge of human specialists and encode it into software. Using vast collections of rules and logic, these programs could mimic the decision-making of experts in specific domains. In medicine, systems like MySyn were developed to help doctors diagnose infections and recommend treatments. In business, companies used expert systems to analyze geology for oil exploration, evaluate loan applications, and optimize complex manufacturing processes. For corporations, it was like having a specialist on call, available 24 hours a day. The idea caught fire. Businesses embraced them, and the AI industry boomed. Governments funded large-scale research, universities established new labs, and tech companies promised a future where intelligent software would revolutionize every field. But beneath the hype, problems began to show. Expert systems were extremely costly to build, requiring countless hours of human experts to feed in knowledge rule by rule. And they were rigid. Unlike people who could adapt to new situations, expert systems struggled outside of their narrow expertise. Updating them was expensive and slow. The limitations became painfully clear by the late 1980s. Many projects failed to deliver on their promises. Maintenance costs soared, enthusiasm dwindled, and investors grew impatient. Once again, expectations had outpaced reality. By the end of the decade, optimism collapsed, funding dried up, and AI research entered another long freeze. This was the second AI winter, a period when the dream of intelligent machines once more seemed out of reach. But, just as before, the dream didn't die. Beneath the surface, new ideas and new methods were quietly taking shape, waiting for the technology and data that would one day bring AI back stronger than ever. The 1990s marked a turning point in the history of artificial intelligence. After decades of setbacks, researchers embraced a new approach, machine learning. Instead of programming machines with strict rules, scientists built algorithms that could learn directly from data. The more information they were given, the better they became. And the timing was perfect. The explosion of the internet created oceans of data, emails, documents, images, and records that provided the raw material AI needed to grow. This shift gave birth to smarter programs, systems that could recognize handwriting, filter spam, and begin to predict patterns in ways that seemed almost intuitive. Then, in 1997, the world witnessed a defining moment. IBM's Deep Blue challenged Garry Kasparov, the reigning world chess champion. For decades, chess had been seen as the ultimate test of human intellect and creativity. Yet in a historic match, Deep Blue triumphed. For the first time, a machine had defeated the best human mind in a game of pure strategy. It was a symbolic victory, a sign that the balance between human and machine intelligence was beginning to shift.
The 2000s tens ushered in a new era for artificial intelligence, an era defined by deep learning. Neural networks, inspired by the structure of the human brain, began to unlock capabilities once thought impossible. With enough data and computing power, these networks could learn to recognize speech, translate languages in real time, and even generate lifelike images and music. For the first time, machines were not just following rules, they were identifying patterns, adapting, and improving with experience. Voice assistants like Siri and Alexa entered our homes. Google Translate brought down language barriers. Image recognition systems allowed computers to see the world through cameras with startling accuracy. Then, in 2016, the world witnessed a defining moment. Google's AlphaGo, trained through deep learning and self-play, faced Lee Seedol, one of the greatest Go players in history. Go had long been considered beyond the reach of machines, too subtle, too complex, too deeply creative. Yet AlphaGo not only competed, it won. Its moves were elegant, surprising, and at times even described as beautiful. Lisa Dole himself called one move divine. It was a turning point, proof that artificial intelligence could master not just logic and calculation, but creativity, intuition, and strategy. The victory of AlphaGo signaled more than a triumph in a board game. It marked a milestone in human history, a moment when AI proved it could outperform us in domains once thought uniquely human. Today, artificial intelligence is everywhere. It writes essays, designs buildings, discovers life-saving medicines, and even powers self-driving cars. But with progress come urgent questions. Who controls AI and whose values shape it? Can we trust its decisions to be fair and unbiased? And what happens if machines one day surpass human intelligence itself? For some, this is the dream of artificial general intelligence, a future where machines think and reason as broadly as we do. For others, it is a warning, a reminder of risks we may not yet be prepared to face. The story of AI is not finished. It is unfolding right now, in our labs, in our schools, and in our daily lives. And ultimately, its future lies in our hands. The history of artificial intelligence is a story of ambition, setbacks, and rebirths. It began with Alan Turing's and Geoffrey Hinton's bold dream that machines might one day think. Through decades of hope and disillusionment, from the optimism of Dartmouth to the chill of the AI winters, the vision endured. Each era brought new breakthroughs. Expert systems, machine learning, deep learning, each pushing the boundaries of what machines could do. Today, AI writes, paints, drives, and even discovers. It stands not only as a tool, but as a partner, reshaping how we work, how we live, and how we imagine the future. But this story is far from over. The questions of ethics, control, and intelligence itself still loom large. And so, the journey continues. From innovator's dream to today's breakthroughs, the next chapter of AI is being written now.